Okay, so what happens when the divisor is greater than the dividend? So, you may have been told previously that the dividend is always greater than the divisor, and that's how you know which one to put in the division box. If you were told that, that was not always true. It may have worked for some elementary school problems, but it's not going to work going forward. For example, if we have 3 divided by 5, 3 is our divide is our dividend and 5 is our divisor and 3 is less than 5. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. Since we always put the dividend inside the division box, the 3 goes on the inside and the 5 goes on the outside. Now some of you might be looking at this and being like, well, but 5 can't go into 3. And you'd be correct. Goes in zero times. Do we just give up, go home, call it a day? No. Okay, because we know that the answer isn't zero. It's There's going to be a fraction. If you have three cookies and you have to you know, give them to five people, we could just say, all right, nobody gets cookies. But in reality, you could split the cookies up. Or maybe you were dealing with cakes or something. Okay, pizzas maybe. We can get a fraction of that pizza to every person. So we just learned that if we run out of digits to deal with in a number in our dividend, we can put a decimal and annex zeros to help us out. So let's see what happens with this. Now, can 5 go into 30? Yeah, it can. It can go in 6 times. Okay, we subtract the 30 because 6 times 5 is 30, and we get 0 as a remainder. Now, we do have to be careful because our answer is not 6. 5 doesn't go into 3 6 times. It does, however, go into... 5 does, in fact, go into 3 6 tenths of a time. So our answer is 6 tenths. So whenever our divisor is greater than our dividend, our answer is going to be less than 1. It's going to be a fraction or a decimal. Okay, um, so don't be scared of problems where the dividend is less than the divisor. It just means that our answer is going to be less than one.